This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You're watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. Right now, Eddie Hearn, he spoke to Sky Sports, and I'll put that in the description box for you. It's an article, so it's an actually video, so go over there, read it for yourself. Once this video is finished, of course, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you are. Do it. Now, Eddie Hearn, he's saying that by the looks of it, Wilder's not going to step aside for Tyson Fury. Wilder's just going to carry on holding up the division like he has for the last five years as champion. And now he's just not going to back out of a rematch. He's not going to take step aside money. But hey, listen, it's never quite off the table, is it? You never know in boxing. But by the looks of it, Fury is going to have to go fight Wilder for a third time in a fight that nobody really wants to see. And then Joshua's going to have to take on Pulev, which is a massive fight here in the UK. Because, first of all, it's Joshua. Second of all, because Pulev has a lot of Bulgarians in the UK. So in the UK alone, it's going to be a massive, massive fight at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Was it 60 or 70,000 people? They'll sell that quite comfortably. Now, right after that fight, they're looking to make undisputed between Joshua and Fury. Providing, of course, both of these guys get through the next fight, which you would have to favour them in, in doing so. So December, undisputed. Now... He says that but obviously both these guys are going to have a rematch clause put in there. So you're going to get a immediate rematch. But he's also talking about a trilogy as well. Now, let's just go back to Wilder and Fury, okay? Most people believe that Fury won the first fight and got screwed to a draw, okay? And had the fight happened immediately, that's when it was really hot. So the pay-per-view numbers would have done potentially even more, more than what it's done now. Although arguably not, because at that particular time, Fury wasn't with ESPN. ESPN have obviously put in um, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money into the promotion of this one as well. So Fox Sports and uh, ESPN collab uh, collaborative pay-per-view. That's why it's done 850,000, allegedly, which is great, great numbers, um, in my opinion. It went nowhere near the Bob Arum 2 million mark, but still, I don't care about how much money it made as far as numbers are concerned. It did very, very well, um, considering that uh, Wilder couldn't sell out the phone box. It done very, very well. So quite clearly, Tyson Fury's endeavours in WWE and everything certainly helped all this one, no doubt. Now, Tyson Fury, he comprehensively battered Deontay Wilder in the rematch. Comprehensively battered him. It's a beating that Wilder will never forget to this day. He will never, ever forget that beating. No matter what happens in his future, he's, he will have nightmares about that particular night. So now we've got a third fight and people um, um, are quite honestly looking at it going, we don't need to see this. Even a lot of Wilder fans are going, we don't need to see this, okay? Because we're not confident Wilder can make any kind of adjustments in this fight. And listen, never say never. Of course, first of all, it's a heavyweight boxing match, right? One punch changes everything. We've seen it time and time again. So you can never totally write off Wilder, not at all, or anybody. But on paper, do we want to see it? Not really, um, in my opinion. So when we fast forward to... Joshua and Fury, no matter what happens in the first fight, if, for example, Fury does to Joshua what he's done to Wilder and absolutely batters him, of course, they're going to have a rematch. A lot of people go, okay, so Joshua, he can make adjustments for a rematch. He can look at everything and make significant changes and adapt to those. We know Joshua is very capable of doing so. So people would still be interested in the rematch. Likewise, if uh, Joshua goes in there and just batters Tyson Fury or knocks him out, however, a lot of people go for the rematch. Well, Tyson Fury is very capable of adapting. So then the rematch is quite interesting, right? But then you get into a third fight and people go, ah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I mean, you know, it's a fight that we've wanted to see. We've seen it twice already. Do we really need to see it again? Probably not. So I think him talking about a trilogy, especially if it's an immediate trilogy, I'm not really too sure about it. Anyway, but... There's going to become a point, you can have the first fight for Undisputed, that's great. We can settle the dust as to who's the best, is that and the other as such. Um, and we get an Undisputed champion, that's great. But I'm telling you right now, I do not believe that the immediate rematch will also be for Undisputed. Belts, or at least one belt, will get stripped from the winner immediately. I'm telling you right now, because all the belts are around the waist of one man. Yeah, we've heard that saying before. So therefore, currently, there will be two mandatories at that particular moment. The WBC with Dillian White and the WBO, currently Alexander Usyk. Okay, if these guys, for example, are, if 
Dilly White gets past um, Povetkin and Usyk gets past Chisora as an example, then these guys want their world title shot. They don't care whether or not Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua should have a rematch. They've got their own things to think about, and rightfully so. So I believe that one of those belts will become vacant. So the rematch won't have undisputed, but that's not too bad though, is it? Because at least we had undisputed, we had the undisputed fight, especially if it's on UK soil. So with a third fight, the second fight, whatever fight um, it may be after, and if it's not undisputed, hey, it is what it is, okay? Because let's be honest, Dini White is well, 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 well overdue a WBC world title fight, and he shouldn't have to be waiting for Fury to get through Wilder, then get through Joshua three times, or at least fight Joshua three times, and then he gets another shot. That's like another two years down the line. That's not right. So in February, he should be fighting for the title, whether it's against the winner of Joshua Fury, whether it's just against Fury, if Fury Joshua doesn't happen, or whether it be for a vacant belt. He should be getting that title shot when it's due, which is February. And it's been long overdue, right? And it's the same with the WBO. The WBO are allowing Joshua to take on Pulev next for the IBF. So they're actually allowing the IBF to get in first. They've they're actually being quite patient about it, which is kind of unusual for WBO. But they're going to want their title up next. So even then, there's a possibility, and it is just a possibility, that even in the Joshua Fury fight, if it does happen in December, might not be for Undisputed. Because they're going to want their WBO title for Usyk to go fight for it, aren't they? Now, you could say, but unification takes pre No, it doesn't. Not always, it, it doesn't. And, and especially the WBO, they have shown this. What happened when Parker um, won the title against Andrew Rees Jr.? He was told, you will be taking on your mandatory next. No unifications, no nothing. So the sanctioning body can override it. And WBO, they have a history of not really too bothered about undisputed. So don't be surprised if the winner or if um, Joshua and Fury do take place in, in um, or does take place in December, is not for undisputed. Anyway, let's just say all stars are aligned and Undisputed does happen, that's great. Then maybe the WBC might be stripped, uh, the WBO might be stripped, so um, Fury and Joshua end up fighting for the WBA and the IBF, and of course the IBO, Ring Magazine, Lineal, whatever. That's still fine, it's still going to be a big rematch. But the third fight, I think you could overdo something. I think after the second fight, I think a lot of people go, not really sure we need to see a third one. Because you can do it too close. And I know people talk about Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, Joe Fraser. These guys all fought each other in like their vicious triangle. Okay, cool. But it didn't happen one after the other. That's my point. They didn't have um, three fights one after the other. That's not how it happened. It happened over a period of time. And I think a period of time is what's going to be needed for this one. I have no issue with these guys fighting for Undisputed in December. After then, an immediate rematch, fine, but a third fight straight away? Mm. I think at that point, people would be like, yeah, we don't really need to see this just yet. Hey, listen, that's my thoughts. Um, ultimately, we'll cross all that bridge when we come to it. We're almost a year away from even the first fight right now, so let alone the second and the third. But anyway, listen, that's my thoughts on it all. As I said, article in the description box from Eddie Hearn. Go give it a read if you so wish. Drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.